Welcome to your history lesson on the atomic theory. Atomic theory is the idea of how did we get from one theory of the atom to where we are today and what we know an atom looks like. So we're going to start the history of the atomic models. And as we go through this, I want you to focus on one key part. I want you to be able to describe the experiments and the conclusions made that created how we look at the atom now. So things you want to focus on as you're taking notes today. Who done it? I don't care about the dates. You don't have to know about the dates. I'm going to talk about the dates, but you don't necessarily need to memorize any dates. Who done it? What was the experiment? What did the experiment prove to them? And what does the atom look like now? Those are the four things we want to focus on. So these are the bunch of the guys that we're going to be talking about, about atomic theory. We're covering two guys today, Dalton, I mean Democritus first, and then Dalton. So those are the two to focus on, Democritus and Dalton, both with Ds. Don't write this part down. It's not that important. We're going to go through all of them. So let's start with Democritus. Democritus, if you look at the date, he was in 460 BC. That was a really long time ago. I don't think this is a real picture of him, but you notice he's a laughing guy. He was kind of a weird guy. He laughed a lot, and he was, he was kind of that goofy guy in the neighborhood. So here's what Democritus thought. He figured if you took things like a tree, per se, and you cut the tree in half a couple times, you get logs. And if you cut the logs in half a couple times, you get these twigs. And if you keep cutting things in half and in half and in half, there has to be a time when you have something and you cut it in half, and then you're left with something and you can't cut it in half any longer. That point where you can't cut it in half anymore, he called atomos, or what we would call the atom. So he pictures the atom just as a blue circle, as I've shown here, or basically just a circle that you can't cut anymore. He didn't do any experiments to support his theory. He just thought logically speaking, which kind of makes sense. There's got to be a point when you can't cut things in half anymore, and he calls that the atom. And everything is built of these tiny atoms. So that was Democritus' idea. It's the first guy I would write down. Now Democritus, like I said, he lived in the BC time. That was a really long time ago, the time of the Flintstones, of course. And at that time, it was people thought Democritus was weird. There's another guy, his name is Aristotle. Don't write this guy down. And Aristotle happened to think that things weren't made of atoms. He thought things were made of what this slide shows, fire, air, earth, and water. And that's what the world is made of, not atoms. So in any case, these two, Aristotle and Democritus, lived at the same time, and they fought for a long time about what they thought. But since Aristotle was actually more popular, and Democritus was kind of the weird guy, nobody believed him. And if we look at our next year, take a look at Dalton. Dalton is from 1800 AD. We were in the BC era of 460, and now we're at 1800 AD. That's a huge time frame when chemistry didn't do a whole lot. Those are some dark ages of chemistry. But this brings us to guy you should care about number two, John Dalton. John Dalton, he did a lot of experiments. We're not going to call it one specific experiment. He just did a lot of things, mixed a lot of chemicals, and he looked at a lot of other guys' work. So he looked at all these different chemicals and experiments, and he came up with big conclusions. And we would call this Dalton's theory. Technically, it's kind of usually called the billiard ball model, or the marble model, because Dalton pictured that the atom looked just like a billiard ball, or just like a marble. And that's why we call it that theory. His first idea, idea number one, is that atoms are tiny, indivisible, which means can't be divided, indestructible, can't be destroyed, particles. So at this point right here, Dalton thinks the same thing as Democritus. They both agree they are tiny, indivisible particles, just a sphere. What brings Dalton's theory a little bit different is his idea number two. All atoms of a given element are identical. Actually, um, Democritus thought this too. All atoms of a given element are identical. So if you have iron, the next iron atom will be exactly the same. Where it starts getting different from Democritus is number three. Different elements are composed of different types of atoms, and each atom has a unique property. So iron is different than sulfur, and they have different properties, so they must be different atoms. That's Dalton's theory. Once again, feel free to pause this at any time to write things down. I do have the PowerPoint online also. So we've got three ideas of Dalton so far. He's got two more for a total of five. Dalton says that um, you can take atoms, and these spheres are different pictures of atoms, and you can rearrange these atoms in two different ways. You could do what's on the left and just take hydrogens and oxygens and throw them in a big bucket and shake them around, and they're just floating around in a mixture. Or, as the picture on the right shows, you can take hydrogens and oxygens, hook them together, and make water or compounds. So his idea number four is atoms of different elements can physically mix, throw them in a bucket and shake it around, or they can chemically combine 
with one another in simple whole ratios to form compounds. So he came up with these mixtures and compounds. He had a fifth idea, idea number five. Idea number five is the idea that we can take these atoms, as you can see on the left side, they've got atoms rearranged in one way, and rearrange them, you can see on the right side of the slide, they're rearranged in a different way. This is a chemical reaction. Dalton came up with the idea that you can take atoms and chemically react them to separate or join or rearrange atoms. And he came up with the chemical reactions idea, big idea number five. Those are the first two guys in our journey to discover what the atom really looks like and how we look at it today. Um, if you could go to this Google form, I'm going to try and put it into a link that's below the YouTube video. And if you could answer those questions to the best of your ability, that would be great. Bring your questions to class.